when thou art king. As God save thy grace, uh, majesty, I should say, for grace thou would have none. What, none? No, by my truth. Well, how then? Uh, Marry then, sweet wag, when thou art king. Let not us to be squires of the knight's body we call thieves of the day's beauty. Let us be gentlemen of the shade, minions of the moon. And then men say we be men of good government governed as the seas by our noble and chaste mistress the moon under whose countenance we assail the <laughs> <laughs> pretty sweet wag shall there be gallows standing in England when thou art king and resolution thus pumped as it is by the rustic curb of old father antique the law do not when thou art king, hang a sin. Oh, thou shalt. Shall I? Who oh, rare. By the Lord, I prove a brave child. Thou judgest false already. I mean, thou shalt have the hanging of the thieves and so become a rare hangman. Well, hell, well. Oh, splash. I'm as melancholy as a chip cat. Or a lug bear. Or an old lion, or a lover's loose. <laughs> Or the drone of a Lincolnshire bagpipe. <sighs> There's that much harm on me, hell. Before I knew thee, I knew nothing. Now I'm little better than one of the wicked. Well, I must give over this life. Well, I will give it over. By the Lord, and I do not. I am a villain. Where shall we take a purse tomorrow, Jack? Zeus, where thou wilt, lad. I'll make one. And I do not call me a villain and bad. I see a good amendment of life in thee. From praying to purse taking. Well, it is my vocation. It is no sin for a man to labor. Points. If men were to be saved by their merit, what hole in hell were hot enough for him? My lads, my lads, tomorrow night at Rochester there are traders riding to London with fat purses. We may do it as secure as sleep. If you will go, I'll stuff your purses full of crowns. If you will not tarry at home and be hanged. <laughs> you hear, Edward? If I tarry at home and go not, I'll hang you for going. You will, Chops. Mm -hmm. Well, will you make one? Who, oh, I, Rob? Yes. I, a thief, yes. not a faith. It is here apparent thou art not heir apparent. There's neither manhood, honesty, nor good fellowship in thee, nor thou camest not of the blood royal, if thou dost not take a part. Once in my life I'll be a madcap. Well, that's well. Come what will, I'll tarry at home. What point the Lord says? I'll be a traitor when thou art king. I care not. Sir John, I believe. Leave the prince and me alone. I will lay him down such reasons for this adventure that he will go. Well, God give thee the spirit of persuasion and him the ears of prophecy. <laughs> After bed. Farewell, the latter spring. Farewell, all hallowed summer. Falstaff, Bardolf, Peto, and Gads Hill shall rob these men as they come down the hill. Yourself and I will not be there. And when they have the booty, if you and I do not rob them, cut this head off from my shoulders. Yea, but it is like they will know us by our horses and our habits to be ourselves. Our horses, they shall not see, I'll tie them in the wood. And Sarah, I have seats of buckram to mask our outward garments. The virtue of this jest will be the incomprehensible lies this same fat old rogue will tell us when we meet at supper. How thirty at least he fought with. Well, I'll go with thee. Provide all things necessary. Farewell. Farewell, my good, sweet, honey, lord. I know you all. And will a while uphold the unyoked humour of your idle method. Yet here in I imitate the sun. Who doth permit? clouds to smother up his beauty from the world that when he please again to be himself 
being wanted, he may be more wandered at by breaking through the foul and ugly mists of vapours that did seem to strangle him. If all the year were playing holidays to sport, would be as tedious as to work, but when they seldom come, they wish for come, and nothing pleaseth but rare accident. So, when this loose behaviour I throw off and pay the debt I have a promise said, by how much better than my word I am, by so much shall I falsify men's hopes. And like bright metal on a sullen ground, my reformation, glittering o'er my fault, shall show more goodly and attract more eyes than that which hath no foil to set it off. I'll so offend to make a fence a skill, redeeming time when men think least I will. How many men? Four. Bringing with them three hundred marks in gold. Who comes here? This bold stuff. I removed his horse, and he frets like a gold bell for his tank clothes. Point of behind! Point! Please be fucking rascal! The brawling that does keep. Where's Point's half? He's walked up to the top of the hill. Yeah. The rascal hath removed my horse and tied him, I know not where! You see him? Help? How? Unless if I can hear the tread of travellers. Have you any levers to lift me up again? Be down! Good Prince Helm, lead me to my horse. Good King Sun. How do you rogue? Shall I be your ostler? Now, go hang yourself! And I have not ballads made of you all, and sung the filthy tunes that have come a sacry, my boys, and... Pardon. What news? There's money coming to any you. It's going to the King's Exchequer. You lie, you rogue. It's going to the King's Tavern. Is enough to make us all to be hanged. Sirs, you force in front them in the narrow lane. Ned points and I will walk alive. If they escape your encounter, then they light on us. How many be there of them? Some I know ten. So, will they not rob us? Farewell. And stand fast. Ned. Where are our disguises? Here. Hard by. Let's have robbed the true men. Now, could thou and I rob the thieves and go merrily to London? It will be argument for a week, laughter for a month, and a true jest forever. But my masters, let us share. The horse before day. And the prince of point be not too arrogant. There's no more fun at point than a wild duck. Yes, Now merrily to horse. Falstaff sweats to death and lards the lean earth as he runs along. But not for laughing, I should pity him. Welcome, Jack. Where hast thou been? A plague of all cowards, I say. And a vengeance to marry an arm, men. Give me a cover, sack boy. Yeah. Plague of all. Cowards, give me a cup of sack, you rogue. Is there no virtue, extender? There's life in this sack, boy! Ah, go thy ways, old Jack. Die when thou wilt. If manhood, good manhood, be not to the earth, I am a sodden herring. Ah, go thy ways. Bad world. Sir. How now, wolf sack, what matter you? A king's son? Yeah. Oh, prince of Wales! Why, you horse and round man, what's the matter? Are you not a coward? Answer me that. And points there. As soon as you fat paunch and you call me coward, by the Lord, I'll stab thee. Yeah, I call thee coward. Uh, I'll be damned that I call thee coward. Pounds, I can run as fast as thou canst. What's the matter? What's the matter? There be.
be four of us have taken a thousand pounds this day morning. Where is it, Jack? Where is it? Where is it? Taken from us it is. A hundred upon poor four of us. What? A hundred, man? Yeah, I have escaped by a miracle. I tell thee what, Hal. If I tell thee a lie, spit in my face, call me horse. Now thou knowest my old ward. Well, thus I lay, and here I pour my point. A four rogues in Buckram let drive at me. What, four? Thou saidest but two even now. Four, Hal, I don't think four. I, I, he said four. With well, these four came all up front and made it trust me. But with no more ado, I took all their seven points at my target thus. Ta, 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 ta. What, seven? They were but four even now. But in Buckram? Aye, oh, four in Buckram, sir. Seven by these hilts, or I'm a villain else. Good, let him alone. We shall have more upon. Just so hear me, Hal. Aye, and mark thee too, Jack. I'll do so. What is worth the listening to? Now, these nine in Buckram that I told thee of. There are two more already. Began to give me ground. But I followed me close. I came in hand and foot. I was a sort. Shut and up the eleven. I paid. Oh, monstrous. Eleven Buckram men got out of two. What if the devil would have it? Three misbegotten days in Kendall Green came at my back and then drive at me. Yeah, it was so dark, Hal. They could not see their hands. These lies are like their father that begets them. Gross as a mountain. Open. Palpable. Why, you clay-brained guts, you knotty-pated fool, you horse and obscene, greasy, tallow cat! What? Art thou mad? Art thou mad? Is not the truth? The truth? Why, how couldst thou know these men in Kendall Green when it was so dark thou couldst not see thy hand? Come. Tell us your reason. What sayest thou to this? Oh, your reason, Jack. Your reason. <laughs> what? Upon compulsion? Zones! And I wrote the Strapado or all the wrecks in the world. I would not tell you upon compulsion. What? Give a man a reason upon compulsion. If reasons were as pitiful as blackberries, I would give no man a reason upon compulsion. I... I will not be guilty of this sin. This sanguine coward. This bed presser. This horse backbreaker, this huge hill of flesh. Splat! You starveling! You health skin, you dry neat tongue, you bold pistol! Yeah, you stockfish, you! Know that I had breath to utter what is like this! You, you, you tails yard! You, 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 you shakes! You boo case! You, you vile! Standing tuck him! <laughs> well, breathe a while until we speak but this. Mark, Jack, we two saw you four set on four and bound them and were masters of their wealth. Mark now how a plain tale shall put you down. Then did we two set on you four and with a word outfaced you from your prize and have it, yea, and can show it to you here in the house. And false star. You carried your guts away as nimbly, with as quick dexterity, and roared for mercy as ever I heard bull calf. What trick, what device canst thou now find out to hide thee from this open and apparent shame? Come, let's hear, Jack. What trick hast thou now? By the Lord. I knew thee. As well as he that made ye. Oh, hark ye, masters. Was it for me to kill the heir apparent? What? Shall I turn upon the true prince? But thou knowest that I am as valiant as Hercules. But beware. Instinct. The lion shall not turn upon the true prince. Instinct. Great matter. <laughs> I was now a coward upon instinct. See, that I shall think the better of myself and thee during my life. Eh? I for the valiant lion and thou for the true prince. Oh, but by the Lord, lads, I'm glad you've got the money. Hostess, <laughs> <laughs> clap to the doors. Eh? Watch tonight. Pray tomorrow. Oh, gallant sled! Hearts of gold, shall we be merry?
Henry. Shall we have a play? Extempore! <laughs> and the argument shall be your running away. No more of that, Hal. And that love was to me. I guess you ran off to prison. There's a gentleman in the court at the door. Says he must speak with you. He says he comes from your father. Send him back again to my mother. Well, what kind of man is he? Why, the old man. What? Doth gravity out of his bed at midnight? Shall I give him his answer? Pray that he do, the Jack. Nay, and I'll send him back again. <laughs> now, sirs, by Our Lady, you fought fair. So did you, Peto. So did you, Bardolf. You are lions, too. You ran away upon instinct. Say, if I ran, and I saw others run. Say, <laughs> tell me now in earnest. How came Falstaff's sword so hacked? Why, he hacked it with his own dagger. And he said he would swear the truth out of England, but he would make you believe it was done in fight. And he did persuade us to do the like. Yeah, you tickle our noses with spear grass to make them bleed and beslubber our garments with it and swear it was the blood of true men. Mm. I did that, I did not this seven years before. I blushed to hear his monstrous devices. Bill, and thou stole a cup of sack 18 years ago, and ever since thou hast blushed extempore. <laughs> <laughs> Here's villainous news abroad. Here was a John Bracy from your father. You must have caught in the morning. That same mad fellow of the north, Hotspur. He that rides a horse back up a hill perpendicular. He that rides at high speed and with his pistol kills a sparrow flying. Hey, you hit it. So did he never the sparrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the rogue has good metal in him. He will not run. Yes, Jack, upon instinct. Yes, uh, well, I grant you, upon instinct. But he and his father, old Northumberland and Mortimer, and a thousand rebels more are busily in arms. Worcester has stolen away tonight. My father's beard has grown white with the news. Uh, you may buy land now as cheap as stinking mackerel. Why then? It is like if there come a hot June in this civil buffeting hold, we shall buy maidenheads as they buy hobnails by the hundred. <laughs> oh, by the master, that says true. Uh, we are like to have good trading that way. But tell me, how uh, are they not horribly feared? Uh, without being heir apparent, could the world pick thee out against such an enemy as that fiend? Blood not thrill at it. Not a whit of faith. I lack some of thy instinct. I am not yet old Percy's mind. The hot spur of the north. He that kills me some six or seven dozen Scots at breakfast washes his hands and says to his wife, Fie upon this quiet life, I won't work. <laughs> <laughs> well, that will be horribly chid tomorrow when thou comes to thy father. If thou love me. Is an answer. Do thou stand for my father and examine me upon the particulars of my life. Shall I? Oh, oh, oh content! <laughs> <laughs> this stool shall be my state! <laughs> this dagger, my scepter, and this cushion. Uh, my crown! Uh, uh, tell me, thou naughty thou, uh, where has it been this month? <laughs> Do not speak like a king. Do thou stand for me and I'll say my father. Oh! Depose me, eh? Huh? If thou does it half so gravely, so majestically, well, then hang me up by the hills for a rabbit sucker and a pulperous hair. Well, here I am set. And here stand I. <laughs> Judge me. <laughs> now, Harry, whence come you? Oh, my noble lord from East Cheap. <laughs> <laughs> the complaints I hear of thee are grievous. Stop, my lord, they're false. <laughs> <laughs> Nay, I'll take a leave of a young prince in peace. Swearest thou, ungracious boy? Henceforth, now look on me. Thou art violently carried away from grace. There is a devil haunts thee in the likeness of an old fat man. A ton of man is thy companion. Why dost thou converse with that trunk of humours? That bolting hutch of beastliness, that swollen 
parcel of dropsy, that huge bombard of sack, <laughs> that stuffed cloak bag of guts, that roasted manning tree ox with a pudding in its belly, yeah. <laughs> that reverend vice, that grey iniquity, that father ruffian, that vanity in years. Wherein is he good? but to taste sack and drink it. Where in neat and cleanly, but to carve a capon and eat it. Where in crafty, but in villainy. Where in villainous, but in all things. Where in worthy, but in nothing. I would your grace would take me with you. <laughs> Who means your grace? That villainous, abominable, misleader of you, false star. Lord, the man I know. I know thou dost. But to say I know more harm in him than in myself would to say more than I know. Banish Plunk Jack. And banish all the world. I do. I will. I will not play with the blade. I have more to say on behalf of that same full stuff. What is your will with me? First, pardon me, my lord. A hue and cry hath followed certain men unto this house. What men? One of them is well known, my gracious lord, a gross fat man. As fat as butter. The man, I do assure you, is not here, for I myself at this time have employed him. And so let me entreat you leave the house. I will, my lord. There are two gentlemen here in this robbery lost 300 marks. It may be so. If he hath robbed these men, he shall be answerable. And so, farewell. Good night, my noble lord. I think it is good morrow, is it not? Indeed, my lord, I think it be two o'clock. The money shall be paid back with advantage. <laughs> <laughs> 